Part 3. Investigating how different technology options affect profitability. In the previous two parts of this video, I used the Virtual Energy Analyzer to prepare a pre-feasibility analysis of a grid-tied photovoltaic project, and then refined the choice of parameters in the Energy tab. In this third part of the video, I'm going to show how RETScreen can help investigate the impacts of different technology options. I previously noted that this project in northwestern Mexico is operating in a hot climate, but when I selected the photovoltaic technology in part two, I didn't factor this into my choice of modules. Rather, I chose polycrystalline silicon modules on the basis of them being the most common type of modules. Let's revisit that choice. I'm going to want to alter parameters on the energy page, and I'd like to be able to compare different options. To allow this, I'm going to generate a list of multiple photovoltaic project options, and then select which one of the options I want to look at. The first project in this list is going to be the polycrystalline silicon project I analyzed in part 2. Since most of my parameters will be the same for all my projects, I'm going to use this as a template for the others. I do this by duplicating the existing project and then renaming the original with PolySI added to the name. Then, in the duplicated project, I investigate what happens when I pick different technologies. Scrolling through them, I see that this changes the normal operating cell temperature and the temperature coefficient. These, in turn, affect the capacity factor. It looks like cadmium telluride, or CDTE modules, might be a good choice due to their lower sensitivity to high temperatures. I'll pick that and update the project name. I'm not restricted to modules that appear in the module database. For example, were there a particular CDT module that I wanted to use, but it was not in the database, I could simply enter the parameters for this module. Let's say I wanted to use a first solar series 4 module with a rated power of 115 watts. I simply set the capacity to 20 megawatts, enter the manufacturer and model, leave number of units blank to avoid having to pick up a calculator, and then copy over the efficiency of 16.0% from the specification sheet. The specification sheet also tells me that the normal operating cell temperature and temperature coefficient are slightly different from the values assumed by RETScreen. By changing the technology to Other, I can overwrite these assumptions. I put in 45 degrees Celsius and 0.28% per degree Celsius. With these choices, the capacity factor is 21.1%, a slight improvement on the polycrystalline module. To simplify matters, I'm going to assume that the project costs remain unchanged. Perhaps I'd want to investigate a third technology. There are some very high efficiency monocrystalline modules appearing on the market, and efficiencies of around 20% appear to be just around the corner. What impact would these modules have? I'll duplicate my most recent photovoltaic project and change the descriptor to high efficiency. I'll select mono SI for the technology. Simply for clarity, I'll change the module information to indicate that this is a hypothetical high efficiency module. Finally, I'll change the efficiency to 20%. With such a high efficiency, we're going to generate a lot more power, right? Well, watch what happens to the capacity factor. It doesn't change. Remember, this is still a 20 megawatt project, so the power shouldn't change. You may have noticed that something did change, however. That is, of course, the solar collector area. Because my modules use sunshine more efficiently, I can generate the same amount of power using less sunshine. 
My solar collector area was around 125,000 square meters with the 16% efficient polysilicon and CDTE modules. With 20% efficient modules, it would be only 100,000 square meters. With an array of smaller physical dimensions, I will reduce my expenditures for racking, wiring, installation, and in some cases, land. For a utility scale project, costs at scale with the solar collector area might constitute 25% of the initial cost of the project. My array is now 20% smaller, so the effect should be a roughly 5% reduction in my initial costs. However, I'm likely to pay a premium for these high efficiency modules. Let's speculate that the premium will be around 2% of initial costs. Therefore, I'd reduce my initial costs by 3% to $1,360. There will also be reductions in operating costs, for example, for scheduled maintenance, land royalties, property taxes, and cleaning. I'm going to assume that 50% of my annual O&M costs scale with the physical dimensions of the project. With these reduced by 20%, my O&M costs would be just $15.30 per kilowatt per year. That sounds like I am specifying the O&M costs much more precisely than is justified at the pre-feasibility level. But the key thing in this comparison is not the absolute value of these costs, but the relative difference due to the physically smaller project. If I want to compare these projects, I can open the Include System table in the Energy page either by clicking on Include System in the ribbon menu or the left-hand navigation pane, or by double-clicking on the power item in the technology list. For each of my projects, this table shows the capacity and electricity generation, the initial and O&M costs, as well as the electricity export revenue. It calculates the simple payback, which is certainly far from the most suitable metric of financial viability for this type of project, but does help us quickly rank these projects. In the column on the far right, I can select which of these projects is to be included in the cost, emissions, and financial analysis. For example, if I select only the high efficiency module project, when I go to the cost page, I see the costs for that project only. Similarly, on the finance page, I am given results for this project only. Note that if I want to see how the choice of project affects the financial outputs, I don't need to flip back and forth between the energy page and the finance page. It is easier to open the dashboard and select the financial parameters or cash flow graphs that interest me. This stays open when I return to the energy page and is updated when I select different project options. For example, I can verify that the internal rate of return is highest for the high efficiency modules. This rapid exploration of different options and seeing their impacts within a big picture reflecting financial, emissions, and energy performance is one of RetScreen Expert's strengths. But keep in mind that it is not an engineering design tool. For a nearly $30 million project such as this one, I'd want to verify my energy assumptions with a simulation tool and get quotations from suppliers before drawing any firm conclusions about the best technology for my project. RetScreen Expert can help guide this process by revealing which parameters are the most critical and need the most verification. We can even bring our external findings back into RetScreen by adjusting the capacity factor and costs so as to provide us with an up-to-date, comprehensive, but easily understood encapsulation of the project through the development cycle. In the next and final part of this demonstration, I'll leave the energy page and look at costs and electricity tariffs. I'll also show how easy it is to move this 20 megawatt project from its current location in Mexico to a site thousands of kilometers away.